What is up, guys? This is Six Meister coming back at you with part three of what if Naruto had a copy Keke Genkai or could copy Keke Genkai. So, yeah, we're back with another part. I do apologize for this taking so long, but it had taken me a while to figure out where I wanted to go with this last part. So, if you are enjoying the series and want to possibly see a movie or continuation of it, make sure to hit that bell notification and subscribe since it will eventually come. And with that out of the way, let's roll that intro. <laughs> As one might guess, with Team 7 now officially being assembled, we would go into events near similar to canon. But of course, nevertheless, there will be changes. Since Naruto and Hinata had started training together to improve Naruto's control over his dojutsu, we would obviously learn that Hinata would at least attempt to progress his taijutsu in the sense of the gentle fist. She would in fact start teaching him the ways of her clan, believing that he is in fact a secret member of her family. So, with the kindness in her heart, she would proceed to every day after missions, help Naruto train. And obviously, along with this, we would see Hinata herself also getting much stronger. Sasuke observing from afar that these two are progressively getting stronger together, he would decide to keep up his own training, but to more extreme degrees. His speed and strength would both go up, and possibly even his chakra reserve. Obviously, this wouldn't be to any large degree, but Kakashi would nevertheless have to eventually step in and help them progress further. Meaning, right before we get the Land of Waves, we might actually see the group learn something like the tree climbing, and it might as well be something very similar to canon with obviously only Naruto gaining an actual change. Since Hinata has the Byakugan and has probably been trained on chakra control, she would most likely get the exercise done immediately or have already known it. On the other hand, Naruto, by using the Byakugan that he obtained, which technically right now is still being kept a secret from both Sasuke and Kakashi, he would also be able to master the technique. He would observe both Hinata and his own chakra as he is performing it to hone in on how much he would need to adapt, eventually being able to do it on a whim. Meaning Sasuke would really be the only person lacking, so he would be ever more motivated to accomplish the task quicker. Thus, we would move on to them thinking that they've been through ample training, Naruto and Hinata, obviously under Kakashi's guidance, continuing their taijutsu training, and Sasuke honing his chakra control, which at the end of the day would also benefit his ninjutsu. So, the team, confident as ever, would, as per usual, request a higher tier mission, in this case being accompanying the bridge builder. And as one might think, the bridge builder would initially enter the room and might even say some unruly things, perhaps along the lines of not wanting to be accompanied by a team of ragtag or a team of ragtag teens. That is pretty hard to say. But nevertheless, he would push forward with his insults, going on to insult Sasuke, who would merely grunt. Naruto, who would at first not seem to care, and then Hinata. He would attempt to say something before Naruto's expression would turn very aggressive, and he would know not to continue talking. And instead, he would accept the help of the group. So, they would be scheduled to meet up in an hour, for where they would then set out on travels. Naruto and Hinata in this specific situation will be taking the front and rear guards, meaning Hinata would replace where Sakura was standing and would also be some sort of lookout using her Byakugan, maybe even switching Naruto and Hinata's positions as she is a valuable asset, meaning putting her directly at the front could be a compromise or could compromise their safety. So she and Naruto's original team or position would be swapped, meaning we'd have Naruto up front. 
And with Naruto up front, meaning his uh, vision or his eyes are obscured from the rest of the team's vision, he would also be constantly surveying the area using the Byakugan. Meaning, most likely, both Naruto and Hinata would notice the Demon Brothers before Sasuke. So, along with them noticing the Demon Brothers, we would see both of them taking into action. As the Demon Brothers attempt to leap out of the water, they wouldn't even have left the ground as Naruto and Hinata would almost instantaneously be in place, having already struck them with multiple Jugen strikes and even having them at lethal point with a finger chakra coursing through it to their throats, meaning the Demon Brothers are ever so close to dying. So, we wouldn't see Kakashi's entire getting hit situation, nor Sasuke attempting to show off. Obviously, he'd be impressed, but Naruto and Hinata's speed still don't quite keep up with his just yet, as he does often train his physical body a lot more than one would think, and having a head start on chakra influence over his body, he would just be a little ahead of Naruto. So, he just knew if they had even taken a second or two later, he would have been able to stop the Demon Brothers himself. Kakashi, on the other hand, still knowing that this is the case, would still say Sasuke should next time not freeze up like that, since Naruto originally did the same thing, even though he would have been purely capable of taking on the Demon Brothers in canon because it was his first actual combat scenario, he did not know how to react. And this time, that's what Sasuke does. So Sasuke would be way too eager to do it next time himself. And, as per the theme here, Naruto being more confident, would say to Sasuke, oh, Why are you standing there, scaredy cat? Which would obviously drive a point into Sasuke's brain. He would not reply knowing if he does, Naruto would be the victor of this argument, and they would continue their mission after getting the information from both Tazuna and the Demon Brothers. Meaning, yes, they do know of the presence of Sabuza, but nevertheless, they have confidence in themselves and their sensei, so they would drive forward to the Land of Waves. Where, unlike in canon, as soon as they cross the river, Naruto and Hinata would both be fully capable of dodging Zabuza's sword. Sasuke, on the other hand, would just stand back as per usual, not really needing to do much, having a pretty good reaction time. On the other hand, upon Naruto ducking out of the way, he would immediately rush Zabuza as he could see him through the fog. At this point, Naruto realized the fog is thick enough for no one to be able to see his eyes, so he would reveal what he believes to be his secretive Keke Genkai. He would actually come pretty close to the A rank missing an in, but his hand would be grabbed out of nowhere as Zabuza would throw him to the side. Naruto is nowhere quick or strong enough to actually compete. Along with this, we would get the introduction as Zabuza would jump to his sword, having an interaction between himself and Kakashi. Zabuza saying that Kakashi Hatake, and Kakashi replying was Zabuza Momoshi. This would lead to a fairly similar interaction as in canon with Kakashi lifting his headband to reveal his Sharingan. But as he does, leaving the young Sasuke and even Hinata shocked, Naruto would clench his head, even moving his hands towards his eyes as they start burning. At the time, he had actually had his Byakugan active, and this was draining chakra in on itself. Now, laying eyes upon Kakashi's Kekigenkai, it would really affect the young Genin's chakra as it is now all over the place. He would fall to the ground, his chakra burning practically, and his eyes in even worse condition. It would be inevitable for him to stay in this position as Hinata would attempt to help him. Sasuke, in this moment of weakness, would leap back as he would protect the bridge builder while his comrades were down, since he knows even though he wants to attack Zabuza to prove himself, their client is more important. So, being as he would call it, the bigger person, he would stay to protect him. Meaning, we would lead on to Kakashi being pretty worried about Naruto, but would at first worry about fending off Zabuza. And as it progresses, he would eventually be hit in the water prison, leaving Sasuke to eventually demand Hinata protect the bridge builder as he would attempt to free Kakashi. This would obviously result in Zabuza using a clone to easily fend 
off Sasuke and Naruto eventually building up the strength to stand and even not only disperse the clone but simultaneously throw a jutsu Zabuza himself had thrown earlier being the water dragon. In this exact moment as Zabuza is thrown back and Naruto falls through the water not even being able to stand on it since he does not have the ability to, Kakashi would catch a mere glimpse of what seems to be a Sharingan, but for now he wouldn't question it. Naruto would have fainted into the water as he had put way too much stress on his body, leaving the rest to unfold near canonically. On the other hand, Hinata would along with Kakashi realize Haku is not a hunter nin, as they would practically have to drag both Kakashi and Naruto back to the bridge builder's house. So along with this, some time would pass until both Naruto and Kakashi awakening, most likely Kakashi before Naruto as he would put Sasuke and Hinata to the training. Hinata would either reveal that she had already known the water walking exercise or would at least pick it up really quickly, with Sasuke doing pretty well and even possibly being able to move on fairly quickly. But before they move on to the next exercise, Naruto would most likely awaken. Kakashi would want to talk to him in private, but he'd insist that Hinata follow. He would explain that he was able to see the movements of Zabuza and even repeat what he had been doing with the jutsu. Kakashi would ask Naruto to pulse chakra into his eyes as his eyes would first turn white, the veins around them popping, and then three tomos starting to spin into the middle. He would then clench his head as his chakra is making his body unstable once again and he would start to drastically pant. Kakashi would confirm his theory saying that Naruto has a combination of both the Sharingan and the Byakugan. But it being three Tomo and Naruto not having knowledge of his Sharingan, Kakashi would actually come up with the theory that Naruto was able to copy the Dojutsu or at least Keke Genkai of those around him. Naruto at first would be surprised along with Hinata, but this gives him a chance to be a much stronger individual. So he would take up the responsibility of learning how to use his power wisely. Meaning, while Sasuke is being moved on to the next exercise, which is most likely going to be Chakra Enhancement along with Hinata, which Kakashi would explain to be the enhancement of one's body through Chakra. He'd explain with this technique one could become more durable, faster, and stronger, practically more than they are naturally. So, both of them would take to this training immediately, as it might help dramatically in their next encounter with the Hunter Nin and Zabuza. Along with this, Naruto would actually be directed to chakra control exercises, as Kakashi would be personally overviewing him a lot of the time, as he wants Naruto to be able to separately activate both Dojutsu, seeing as having both active simultaneously puts way too much strain on his body. And most likely before the day of reckoning, Naruto might be able to do this. And for this specific scenario, he would not. So sadly, this would leave a tired Naruto to encounter both Haku early and also move on to save Tenori and his mother Tsunami, as he did in canon. On the other hand, as he would move to the battle, he would actually know that this might be required, and as he pants across the battlefield with his Byakugan, he would be able to locate Sasuke and Hinata, as he sees Hinata protecting the bridge builder and Sasuke in a confrontation with Haku. He would make his way to the area as he would at least try to change Dojutsu, but it would at first not work. As he would see Hinata, he would ask what the situation is, but before she could even answer, he would bolt into the Dome of Ice to protect Sasuke from what seems to be a fatal blow. He would at first switch Dojutsu unknowingly and would freeze up for a second as he was able to see everything that was happening. This would obviously leave an opening for Haku to strike at Naruto as Sasuke would take this opportunity to save him. Naruto would then look back to see Sasuke's eye with a red tomo in it, or a black tomo in a red pupil, with Sasuke looking back to see the Sharingan in Naruto's eyes. At first, he would not question it, deciding he would do it later, 
but he needs to get his revenge, so he would say nevertheless, why are you standing there, scaredy cat, as both of them would proceed to face Haku's onslaught one on one. But throughout this time, Naruto would seem to know exactly where Haku would be. And even at one point, as Haku jumps out of the dome to protect Kakashi, Naruto would attempt to copy a jutsu he had seen Haku use earlier. At first, both Kakashi and Sasuke would think that wouldn't work since the ice release is a Keke Genkai. Just remember, because of Naruto's uh, dojutsu in this specific scenario, he would not be in a situation for Sasuke to get that hurt, meaning we wouldn't have the first Nine Tails outburst in this scenario, or at least this early on. Leaving Haku to attempt to save Sabuza, where Naruto would attempt to repeat one of Haku's jutsu, Sasuke trying to practically scream out that that won't work, but nevertheless, it does. An ice mirror would appear or a dome of ice mirrors as Naruto would start leaping between them. He would at least attempt to trap Haku, but his non-existent knowledge of the technique would prohibit him from doing so, as Haku's pure speed would be able to force through the mirrors and still take that hit for Zabuza. On the other hand, this would leave Zabuza to still, as per usual, want to face off against Gato and Naruto even screaming at Zabuza as usual. Sure, there was no Nine Tails rage moment, but he would still see that there should have been respect in the person he met in the forest's name. Zabuza would go on to slay many of bandits and even Gato himself, as Kakashi and the rest of Team 7 would sit down to at least talk about their scenario. Sasuke, who had been rather calm up until this point, would accept the explanation of Naruto's abilities, and would know that Naruto was practically gifted for all this. But nevertheless, he was able to keep up with both Haku and Naruto during that fight, so he thinks himself on pretty easy ground, or at least even ground, as he thinks Naruto merely has it easy. But nevertheless, he feels he could become more powerful. But yeah, with that out of the way, that's going to be it for part 3 of 3 of what if Naruto had a copy Kekigenkai. I know there was a lot of you that wanted this series to continue past where it has gotten to, but it genuinely did not do well enough. But nevertheless, we might continue it in the future, possibly even rounding it off with a movie special. So make sure to keep an eye out for that by either subscribing and hitting the bell notification or just visiting my channel every so often. But yeah, with that all out of the way i do have a discord which link should be both on screen and in the description so if you do want to help make sure to go check it out and as per usual i would like to raise awareness for the increasing suicide rates all around the world so if you or any of your loved ones are considering hurting yourself or others please consider checking out this number and giving them a call since they will help you through anything or at least attempt to so don't do anything stupid or drastic and please consider getting help so with that this is mini boy six peace one two three let's go subscribe for more yada yada does it